This is a video to show you how to make a uh, bucket seat uh, and seat cover for a Pioneer Trek. So some of the youth groups in Utah and other places will uh, we'll get together and go on these Pioneer Treks where they reenact how the Pioneers came across the plains. And uh, our particular group is asking all of the youth to uh, have a, a five gallon bucket uh, which they'll use is basically their suitcase and then they've they're recommending that we put a, a pad on the top and So I will sh I'm going to show you how I did this. There's a million different ways of, of how to actually do this, but this is how uh, This is how I decided to, to do it. So Actually, I can move it out here. All right, so the first thing is I went and got some, some buckets. So there were a lot of different types of buckets. So Home Depot, went to Home Depot, to Lowe's, to Walmart, to Smith's, to, and then I eventually um, decided to buy buckets at Lehigh Roller Mills for a couple different reasons. Uh, the first is these buckets are about two inches taller, maybe two and a half inches taller than the other buckets. They're more uh, sturdy. And uh, also the lids uh, have these sections where I'll, I'll show you, I've, I've kind of cut these out um, so that when the lid's on, so a lot of these lids, when you seal them, really the only way to get them off is to use one of these uh, pail openers. And you have to basically kind of you know, pry it open. Um, and so I like this bucket because um, the way that it's designed, you can actually just pull it open uh, with your hands. You don't actually have to bring a, a tool if you don't want. And then I made it a lot easier by just cutting out these, um, these pieces. So just, you know, box cutter. Um, there were eight different sections here that were already kind of um, perforated. And then I I just uh, cut these cut these out. I'm not going to show doing that because it takes a little bit of time. But uh, so yeah, so I got the buckets. Um, let's see the pricing. Um, these buckets cost $5.99. The lids were $2, um, which was about the same price, maybe a little bit more than some of the other uh, some of the other places. So uh, the next thing I got is I I bought. Um, a big sheet like an eight foot by four foot sheet of, of hardboard and so um, I had seen some people using um, uh, particle board or um, for this and I like this because it was um, it's lighter weight and because we have to hold we have to because we have to um, hold these or carry these on our um, carts uh, the lighter weight uh, the better. So, so I went with this uh, this hardboard, and so a big sheet of, of like an eight foot by four foot sheet was like um, I don't have the price, something like seven dollars or something. And so I had a lot more um, hardboard than I actually needed. Uh, I think I was making about ten about ten of these, and I had I had plenty to um, to to use. So uh, one thing that I did first is I put some paper and I, I made an outline of about the size that I wanted to cut these uh, these hardboards and um, in this particular case it was about ten and a half well about ten inches a little ten and a quarter inches and um, so I made this, this pattern and I tried not to make it exactly to the, actually the first time I did it, I made it exactly to the edge. And then as I started cutting out these, these hard boards, I get them over here and some of them were pretty tight. I'd have to have to trim them down. So you don't have to be exact here. Um, just try to make a, a, an outline um, that doesn't have to be exactly the size you need. You want it a little bit smaller so you're not having to trim it down later. So I cut all of these hard board uh, pieces out just using a, a jigsaw um, and then I, I cut a hole in the middle and the reason why we have the hole is so that I can put uh, a washer, a bolt, 
and um, and then attach it to this uh, this lid. So another thing I didn't mention, I ended up I cut uh, the same size hole, a fourth fourth inch uh, hole through these these lids, uh, so that once I attach the seat uh, to this, then uh, I can attach the, the seat cushion to uh, you know to the to the bucket the bucket lid. So. Um, so other pieces, these, uh, these nuts and bolts, uh, let's see, I wrote this down. So um, I, I got uh, round head bolts uh, that were a fourth inch bolts. Um, the length is that I, that I got was one inch and a quarter. And part of that is because the way that this um, lid is set up, it, uh, there's kind of a, a little bump here. And so it was a little thicker than um, some of the other uh, bucket tops. Um, another thing that I didn't mention, I did um, on this particular Lehigh Roller Mills lid, there were a few uh, plastic bumps that I, I just cut off with a, a knife so that when I uh, attach the hardboard, it, it sits, sits flush. So, okay, so that's the, the hardboard. The other thing that I did is I went and I, I bought some, uh, this is just three inch foam. Um, just that I actually bought it at, at Smith's. You could get it at, at Walmart or wherever. This three inch foam pad was more uh, dense than some of the other ones that I saw. Some of them, you kind of squeeze it and it would immediately just flatten and wouldn't, wouldn't leave uh, as much uh, cushion for a seat top. Uh, so I got this one, it's a little more thick. It was the same price as the others. Uh, I think this whole, this whole sheet, this large sheet was um, Seventeen dollars, so that was one of the more expensive things um, that I got. But I was able to cut out, um, let's see, ten, probably do about fifteen um, of these uh, these circles here. So, um, so what I did is I also used this uh, the same um, uh, uh, pattern that I had before. I made, but then I made the the uh, pad a little bit bigger. Um, because it's sitting sitting on the on the top here um, and uh, so I cut that out the way that I cut this out I first tried using a jigsaw which was a bad idea on foam because it does nothing and so what I found worked the best was just a um, uh, like a, a turkey uh, electric turkey knife uh, electric knife uh, this this particular one has two to two blades that kind of uh, rotate um, opposite of each other and it cut right through this really really easily it made it made it uh, made it pretty nice so if you've got an electric knife um, then that's the way to go on the on the foam much easier than than scissors okay so I cut out these uh, these pads and then the other thing that I got um, I went and bought some uh, material so some fabric um, this this fabric I ended up getting is uh, it's waterproof. It's more of like a vinyl on the underside. Uh, I thought about doing a vinyl on top and bottom, but I decided not to do that because I was worried that the vinyl sitting in the sun may be, be get uh, pretty hot. So this one has more of a material on the, the one side, and then a vinyl on the underside. And the reason for that is if it rains, I didn't want this uh, this pad filling up with uh, with water. So, uh, so I got this, this uh, fabric, and let me see how big it was. I think it was about, about two feet. Um, yeah, so, so I, I uh, had them cut at um, 26 inches, and that was to give me plenty of, of room so that as I'm uh, putting this up here, and actually it's more like this. So uh, the way that I would do this is I put a, a washer and a nut through the uh, hardboard and then I would place this this hardboard on top of the, uh, the foam pad and then I would start uh, attaching this here. Now you, as you can see this uh, there's plenty of, of uh, uh, room here. Uh, the way that the, the yard um, uh, fabric came, I couldn't quite fit three, and so it's pretty, 
uh, it can only get too wide. Uh, so you, you want to have about 20, I've got 25 inches. You could probably do 24 inches. Depend, it all depends on the size of your, your foam pad of how much fabric you'll, you'll need there. So, um, so I cut out this fabric. And then what I've done is I have a, um, a stapler, just a, a hand stapler. This is an arrow stapler. And so I went and got some smaller staples because I didn't want, uh, before I had some longer staples, I didn't want those going through the, the hardboard. And then when you sit on it, you might be able to, to fill that. So I, um, these are the, the T50 staples, a fourth inch or six millimeter. And so uh, with the staple all the way through the fabric and through the hardboard, um, it barely it barely comes through on the other side. And with the, the pad, you, you, you can't feel that um, at all. So the way that I would attach this to the hardboard is I would start on the shortest side of the fabric and then feel where the edge of the hardboard is. And then try to uh, staple around the, the outside edge of the hardboard. Uh, also, this hand stapler isn't quite powerful enough to send that uh, staple all the way through the hardboard. If you have an air-powered um, staple gun, that would probably work better, and it would save you from having to do this and actually hammer those, uh, those screws down, down through. So now that's flush there. And then I would go to the next staple. And I kind of fold this over a little bit, however you want, um, just to make that next um, corner, curve it around. Um, you also want to make sure that it's staying uh, tight so you don't have it uh, loose on one side. Okay, and the next staple. Just make sure that's kind of tight there. Fold it over, make the next turn. I forgot to mention this uh, this fabric cost, I think it was about, for a, for a square like this, um, it was something like $1.25 at Walmart. go all the way around. Um, I'm not actually going to show that because it does take just a minute, but I will show. Um, so here's one that's finished. Actually, which one? I think this is the better example here. So after you staple that all the way around, and you could probably hot glue it or, or use some other way of doing that. Um, I just stapled it because that's what I had around. But when you finish up, it'll be something like this. And then I would just take, you know, just take some scissors and kind of trim this down. Um, you don't want this to be kind of uh, too thick. And actually on this one, I, I could probably trim that down even more just so it will sit flush on the, the top of the, the lid. Um, okay, so uh, no, that's, that's basically what it, what it looks like when you're, when you're all finished. Uh, you, know, you just have kind of the folds around the corners. And then to attach this, it just goes back through that hole that you, dr that you drilled through the, the lid. Put a big washer on there so it doesn't tear through. And then what I decided to do is just put two nuts on here. 
um, so, that, so that we can hand tighten it and it's not going to, to come loose very, very easily. Um, and then of course, This one where I've cut out the every other um, section, it just snaps down pretty pretty easily. And then, and then you sit on that. Um, another thing, because I went with the three inch pad to put the handle up, you just kind of swish that down, and now you've got the the handle. Some of the some of the videos that I saw online um, said to do a, like a say a one inch uh, pad instead of three inches because it said you wouldn't be able to put a handle up. Um, I decided to go still go with the three inch pad because I'd rather have a softer seat than um, a handle that that perfectly um, slides up and over the the pad. So so that's pretty much. That's pretty much it. Um, that's that's how I decided to to do this this bucket and the lid. Obviously, there's a million different ways of, of doing this. This is a way that that was uh, pretty easy and straightforward for for me. Um, the total price, including tax, of getting this this bucket with the um, the seat pad on on top, what uh, with tax was thirteen dollars and twenty four cents. Um, and you know, most of that was actually the, you know, the bucket, the bucket and the lid was, was $8. Um, and then it was about roughly about $5 for, um, for the, the nice pad and, and, uh, fabric on, on top. So, so hopefully that, that will give you some ideas of, of how you can do your, uh, bucket lids and, and good luck.